Welcome back everyone to video number 9 on DSL, so the domain specific language introduced by Spark SQL part 5, where we are going to rename some columns, use some var arcs, um, use the function or method with a column to introduce a new column in our data frame and to filter our data frame to contain only certain rows. And yeah, that's basically a small use case how, uh, how you might have uh, how you might have to solve it in a project. So here's the small assignment. At first we should rename all of the columns in our data frame to be of the camel case format, which is quite standard for column names as well. And it's also how, how we name variables in Scala. So once we do the bridge or we bridge the gap between objects and our data frame, that might come in very handy. So I would recommend um, to you to use um, column names of camel case format. So that's what we're gonna do here. And then we're going to add another column to our data frame, which is going to be the difference be between the opening and the closing price of our stock for each of the rows. And then we are going to filter our data frame um, to that rows where the close price was 10% higher than the opening price on the same day. All right, let's head over to our IDE, where our first task is to rename the columns of our data frame DF. So on the data frame, we could call um, a method, which is called with column renamed, and it takes two parameters. Um, the first one being the existing name and the second one being the new name. So what, what we do, what we could do to rename our column would be to say open should be called open. Now we could chain, uh, chain such transformations together by simply calling another transformations on top of the data frame. So we could say close should be close. That works beca because our column with column renamed method, and that's true for uh, functional programming paradigms, returns the data frame. So directly to the result of that call, we can add another transformation call which makes it handy for us so because we can chain transformations together. However, as I said, there is a smarter way to do that. So what we can also do is use our column transformations because what we could do is we could reference a column simply using the cull function. We need to import it from our functions object and say, okay, the date. So we want to reference the date column and say as which introduces a new ali alias for this column and say date. And this we would have to do for all of the columns and all of these transformations we can in turn store into a list. So what we can say is we introduce a new value, say re rename columns and say it's a list of columns or column transformations and then we can add this one into the list and add more. So the next one would be, for example, let me open the data file so that we can see which columns we have. So we would have date and then open and then high and then low. and then close. And then here is an interesting one because it's called adjacent close, ADJ close. And it actually has a space in the column name, which makes it you know, uh, not so easy to use because we would have to escape the, sca the, the space all the time. So here uh, the camel case comes in quite handy. So we would call it ADJ close in camel case format. And then we have the volume here as well. So we have basically our column references for each of our columns stored as a list. And this list we can use now within the select expression. Um, so on our data frame, we can call select and there is the select method 
which takes a number of columns. Now in order now in order to pass a list because a list is not a var arc so here we are we are having a var arc so any number of column objects is not the same as a list of column objects but there is a concept in Scala which we could use which is called var arc splice so name, uh, rename columns is a list and now we would use the var arc splice which has this syntax which basically um, flattens down our list into a var arc. So we can pass a list into a var arc. And this we could print now and see that our columns have new names. So it completed and now we can see that we have nice camel case names. Now, if we had to do this more often, it would make sense to implement a method or function in Scala which takes a string name and basically transforms it into a, a camel case name and then use this function on all of the columns of a data frame. And that we can do if we have the DF object, we can say columns, which is this field here, which gives us an array of strings. So an array of the column names. And for each of these column names, we could do something now, for example, with a map. So we can transform each of the column names um, within this map function. So we could say, for example, to lowercase. So all of our columns would have been uh, lowercased. And now we need to transform this one into a column expression as well. So in order to select them from a data frame now, we would say column C and C being the column name and then alias or s and then the lowercase column name so that would um, give us a list of expressions again or column references so on our df we could say select and then this entire thing as a var arc splice and then dot show would also work and we for example would only lowercase the column names but not transforming them into um, camel case yet because that's out of scope for this video it would take too long it's sim simply a Scala practice has nothing to do with spark functionality so but I want to show you that it works so here in the last output we can see that our uh, column names simply have been lower cased all right but that only as a side note we have renamed our columns so let's store this one in a new reference. So let's say stock data has already the lowercase column names. We remove the show statement because that has a unit type. So it doesn't return anything. It just prints it to the console. But here we only want to store a new reference to the data frame. And now we would like to add a new column. This new column should be the difference between the opening and the closing price or respectively between the closing price and the opening price. And we can basically add a new column by calling with column on our data frame. So DF, oh no, that's wrong. We should use stock data and then with column. And here we can, it takes two parameters. The first one being the column name of the new column. So in our case, it's diff. And then the second one is a reference to a column, which we are so familiar with. So we can do um, all of the things we have seen here before. So for example, what we wanted to do in our case is to reference a column, let's say the close price minus column open price. And that will be the difference. So we will have a new column called diff, which is the difference between the um, close price and the open price. So we could store it here in a new um, reference or in a new value, but we can also chain these things together as I showed you before, simply by chaining them with a dot annotation. So first we would um, rename the columns <clears throat> and then based on this renamed columns, we will add a new col uh, column called diff. And this stock data we can show now 
and print it to the string screen. All right, now it has completed and we can see that we have the div column now, which is the difference between the closing price and the opening price. So the closing price being here, here, and the opening price being here. And here we can already tell from the minus that the closing price is lower than the opening price. And that was the second part of our assignment. And the third one is to filter days when the close price was more than 10% higher than the opening price. Let's go to our IDE, close this window. Also this one, don't need it anymore. Increase the size here a little bit. So, and now we would like to filter and within our filter function or method, <clears throat> we use in turn references to columns. And what we can say, for example, is column close should be larger than the opening price by 10%. Should be larger than the column open times 1.1, which would be 10% over the opening price and yeah so we filtered the data now on the stock data we can say show and it will give us only rows where the closing price is 10 percent higher than the opening price okay let's look at the result so we have very small numbers here actually so the opening uh, price is 0.5 and the closing price is 0.56 so it's more than 10 percent higher uh, we can see it's in the diff here as well. So our filter works. And this was, yeah, this was actually an assignment I wanted to show you just so get you so that you can get familiar with the domain specific language, basically this um, Scala API for using Spark SQL. So yeah, we have completed some basic assignments. Mm -hmm.